Why hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 517, that's 517 of the Agostino Zynga show, how you doing, how you feeling my friends, great, amazing, how am I, you know how it is, trying to do the best I can with the time that I have available as per always, as per usual, as per standard. If it's your first time checking the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, feelings, suggestions regarding the show and everything I have to speak about. And of course, if you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 star review. I've seen a bunch on there already. Keep them coming. Keep them coming thick and fast. Sounds a bit weird, that. But anyway, thick and fast. Spread that load. Um, get it all over my face. <laughs> Whatever it may need to be done. Just get it out there so that people can find the show. Bumped up in the algorithm. Unless people find it when they auto search. You know, all that good stuff. All that good SEO, general stuff. You know how it helps people. And of course, support for your patrons. Welcome to our patreon.com. For just like Christina. If you listen to this now, you should see a new patron bonus show only available for you at this moment. If you already listened to this, if you're not listening to this, then jump onto patreon.com. For just like Christina. Join for only $1 per month and get access to all my patrons on content on there don't delay jump on there today but yeah that's it apart from that and apart from the plugs that's most of it but how are you guys doing hope you're well hope this may find you hope you're doing good and you are you know in a good sprightly sort of manner i really do hope so um i'm feeling pretty decent myself in this one little occasion that i'm in what i've been up to over the weekend not really that much i spent most of our time at home sleeping being in bed not really moving too much didn't even go to the gym or anything so it's been a pretty lazy weekend i did for i did briefly um happened to go to e1 to go to the retextures event to go see spf dj jazz and who else i see play a little bit of Daniel Avery before it changed over. Missed out an actress. Um, got my ticket a little bit too late or decided to go a little bit too late. So that was a bit of a bummer. But apart from that, um, also watched the UFC fight night. Saw Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez. What an incredible fight. So that was brilliant to watch. Um, missed out on all the international football because the international football is flipping garbage. I'll let anyone tell you that. Um, you know, especially international qualifiers with the European Nations League and all, the Nations League and all this nonsense. It's just too much to keep up with and it's boring. And, you know, especially when it's some of the better nations of it against some of the smaller nations or some of the bigger nations against some of the smaller nations, there's a bit of a no contest. Um, whilst I'm recording this to you, well, at the time of recording, England beat what San Marino ten 0 Who's watching that? Do you know what I mean? Uh, I've got I've got no I've got no time to be watching, you know, Harry Kane scoring two hat tricks against two, you know, garbage oppositions and celebrating by cupping his ears or something. You know what I mean? I've got no time for that. I'm all right. So I'll move on from that one. But yeah, apart from that, all good really. All good, you know, just doing the best I can with the time I have available as per usual. Planning, thinking of stuff to buy for Christmas already. Planning and thinking what to do for New Year's Eve. Planning and thinking what to do for trips in the New Year's. I think after my Berlin trip, I'm a little bit more comfortable with going out now or going out on holiday and kind of doing all the little, you know, the little hoops that need to be jumped through in order to go on a trip. It's not that difficult, to be fair. I think people are making much more of it than what it actually is. It's a lot, you know, it's not that big of a deal really to go on holiday. I found, um, especially um, if you kind of plan things ahead of time. Um, obviously, there's some documents that need to be filled and stuff, but it's nothing that you can't do on your phone, legitimately. Like the passenger locator forms, all this sort of stuff you to do is legitimately just type it on your phone it's pretty easy to be done but you just gotta make sure you do it obviously ahead of time so that's something to kind of keep an eye on i even remember i think what was that one form there's this one particular form that i didn't have any idea that you had to kind of fill out beforehand i think i'll just mention just in case people are from the uk and you want to fly abroad there's this one other form right that i did oh how do you do this recent can i go in recent and see it here yeah there's this is one form called okay okay maybe it's the same thing then so the yeah, passenger yeah P P F L there's a passenger locator form what's the other thing yeah the, sorry it's the P F L and then you also have to do the um, uh what's the other thing for there's a thing for the for the when you get a vaccine in it right because there's a day two kind of lateral flow test you have to take so basically in order to go on a holiday you need to make sure what you're vaccinated or you have a proof of it or that you can show that you're negative i think when you're negative you have to kind of jump for a few more hoops but if you've got a vaccine passport it's fairly easy you get your international kind of vaccine passport pdf that you can download onto your phone or you can have it printed out i i had i had both just because i'm a bit of a granddad so i had it on my pdf as a phone and i also had it in printed document and then you do your passenger locator form which then also contains the other form you have to fill out or you have to order a kind of a lateral flow test or a pc 
PCR test to make sure you do it when you land back for day two. And those are basically the steps you have to run through. For whatever reason, with Ryanair this time around, I had to also print out the boarding pass. That's what it said on the. That's what it said when you kind of booked when you kind of booked your ticket and it was done, and you had to add it to your wallet. It had this box that said, "Oh, you have to print your boarding pass too." I did print it, but I didn't need to use it in the end, which is a bit of a ball lick because I don't have a printer at home. Most people don't have printers, which is a weird thing in it when it comes to tech. No one's really figured out a good printer. Like Apple doesn't want it. Right, Apple doesn't bother making a printer, but no one's made a printer that just works. It works with any system, PC or, or Mac, and it just prints well, it scans well, it's just simple to use. No one's really figured it out yet. It's all really fuddy duddy. But regardless, you have to go to what, an internet cafe or what I have next to me, I have like a little um, printing place that does like, you know, um, it does signages, it kind of, you know, puts frames, it does makes frames for pictures and shit, and they can print. So I went there and printed my stuff. Obviously, you still have to send it to email. You have to, you have, to have coins. It's, also, it's a bit of a run around. And I didn't use it in the end. But anyway, it's good to have in your hand. But so far, after that first trip, I'm feeling a lot more confident about going abroad. So I'm thinking of maybe doing a trip to Kiev and obviously a place. Um, and then obviously trying to go to Tbilisi. So Kiev in Ukraine, Tbilisi in Georgia, the home of Demna, Vasilia. Um, so that should be awesome. Mostly, obviously, going for the clubs. Obviously, going to go to Basay Basayan. Basanani, have you pronounced that name in Georgia? And obviously go to the other club in Kiev that's just got the symbol. Going to check that out, especially with all the stuff that's going on there politically. It might be a good chance to kind of slip in there before those places close or whatever happens, you know. Um, but yeah, that's been about it, really. It's been about it. Not really too much else going on. Not else much going on. But I've been thinking, what's that? I was thinking again briefly. Maybe it's because of all the stuff happening on the timeline now with all the Danny Lay, the baby stuff. But I was just thinking in general, right? What's more painful? to deal with as a grown-up i know it's different when you're younger because everything seems a little bit more heightened but when you're a grown-up and you don't really have as many familial or no let's say you don't have as many like friendships or relationships i think when you get older they kind of start to decrease whether it's because people move on with life or they die or shit you know something happens but it seems like there's a sweet spot when you have all the friends in the world right when you're between the ages of like oh what would you say maybe like 13 14 to about 21 when you're like hot you know what i mean you got like mad mad friends like legitimately you know bare people you walk into a house party and it's like oh it's safe 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 yeah you're welcome 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 do you know what i mean then then soon it just starts to slowly but surely level out to the point where you know you try and organize a birthday party and you're lucky to get 10 good people 10 proper friends in the room together it's difficult because everyone's doing their own thing but i just think the other day what's worse a bad breakup with somebody you're going out with in a relationship, right? Somebody you're dating or whatever you're in a long-term relationship with, or a bad friendship breakup. What's worse, a bad relationship breakup or a friendship breakup? Now, I would say, from my own personal experience, for sure a friendship breakup, because all the breakups I've had in relationships, for the most part, they've usually been me instigating the breakup, because I'm a bad boy, of course. <laughs> um, or, and also, I have this weird tendency that when I'm over something, I, t I tend to like memory hole it, Right, I tend to just to kind of pretend like it never happened, and kind of could just exist without ever remembering that, that situation was a thing. Obviously, it hurts for a period of time, but in long term, I can forget about it. But when it's a friendship breakup, for the most part, my most all of my friendship breakups anyway have usually been somebody saying, you know, quite unequivocally, like I don't want to be friends with you anymore, or purposely trying to like distance themselves from me. Do you know what I mean? Which is a pure and utter rejection, right? That's pure utter rejection in like the clearest, simple ways of even describing it. There's no way you can kind of sugarcoat that. That's just somebody saying, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. Because the relationship thing is different is different. I don't know, the relationship thing is different to process because I think in my head, I'm like, okay, this person has love for you. Then if the love goes, you're not really friends and sometimes people say, Oh, he's my best friend, she's my best friend. No, you're not. You're you're going out, you're fucking and if you don't, then there's no need to be together anymore. Do you know what I mean? Because the friendship's not there, which is which also also which is what makes it even doubly difficult when you start dating your friends, because there's a friendship there that you obviously don't want to ruin, but then maybe there's feelings that you want to explore, and you know you only live once. So, why would you? What would you rather? Would you rather live in the live in um, uncertainty of never knowing that maybe your soulmate was right next to you this whole time? Or respect the boundaries of your friendship and just keep that to yourself. Who knows? It gets messy. But from my own experience, definitely getting people or when people decide they don't want to be your friends anymore or don't want to be your friend anymore at all, 
that's a blow that it's really difficult to take for the ego like incredibly difficult i'm not gonna lie um i remember when that happened to me it wasn't unexpected don't get me wrong because there was a lot of layers to the friendship that you know maybe some lines got crossed maybe some lines definitely did get crossed so it made the whole breakup thing more understandable but still when someone says i don't want to be your friend anymore i've got my i've got other friends now you know whatever void whatever whatever service you fulfilled for me in the past i've now replaced you with somebody else that's difficult to take it's probably as difficult when you see like a new an ex get with somebody else and they seem to be better than you in every stage way shape or form not even attractive but just as a person they seem to be a much better person you're like ouch but definitely i think friendship things are definitely harder to get over because Again, I don't know, man. I've, I mentioned it previously in another comment that someone replied to me when I was talking about some Berlin thing. Like, oh, you go on about, you go on, a, a, you talk about Berlin too much. You talk about well, clubs too much. It's like, I get it. I understand. It can be annoying, right? But I'm also of this point of view that when you're an adult, for me personally, I'm not sure about you guys, but when you're an adult, right? And you kind of, you've done all the things that you need to do in your, your kind of younger age it's very difficult to find hobbies and interests that can kind of occupy your time outside of just drinking legitimately or eating out and stuff there's not really much else to do especially if you don't do sports and stuff right again i, I play sports i skateboard and shit i run i go to the gym so those things have kind of filled out but if you don't have all that stuff again because there's a lot of guys that like this that don't do any sports i don't play any sports don't watch any sports so imagine how kind of i wouldn't say empty but imagine how small of an option of interest and hobbies you have to pick from when you kind of minus all that stuff out so it's no surprise someone like myself when you suddenly do get a hobby or an interest or field that you're interested in when it comes to electronic music clubbing you know nightlife travel and all that sort of stuff there's n it's no wonder that i'm so obsessed with it and i get so like you know ain't know about it right and i'm talking about it on my podcast again and again and again because it's an interest and a hobby that occupies a lot of my time it allows me to be geeky it allows me to meet new and interesting people and if anything it keeps me forever young forever vibrant forever fresh right i feel like i'm alive again i'm because i'm learning new things all the time i'm going to new places i'm finding out about new club nights new record labels new this new that i'm digging in deeper i'm looking at this person's instagram account following that person sharing the picture this, da, 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 da. it's a really interesting space to be in but i can understand when you look at from the outside point of view it's like god almighty this guy's going on about this place again and again just move over there leave us alone do you know what I mean but it's not as simple as that of course but I think the same thing goes for friendships it's very difficult when you're older to find friends like legitimately gen genuine friends not talking about people that are just you know you're acquaintance with people that you can legitimately call friends which is why a lot of people are so quick to like latch onto people they work with as friends because those are people that are sort of forced to get to know you over the period of like eight days five days per week at work even if it's really a zoom you're still getting to know each other a lot more than your you still get to talk to each other a lot more maybe than your actual friends get to talk to you and then over time that relationship blossoms it grows you start to go out to bars together maybe hang out more go for a dance and suddenly you're on holiday and then boom you become actual friends and you've crossed that little threshold of like acquaintances colleagues and then your friends or colleagues acquaintances whatever way it goes and then your actual friends so it's no surprise that if that person decides to cut you off it can be a blow that can be hard to recover from more so relationship wise because people fall out in and out of love all the time it's no big deal it can seem like a big deal but it is no big deal if you think about it but the friendship thing is like oof like i've only got three and now you're leaving me that means i've only got two friends you know what i mean it's like it's a bit it's a bit hard to kind of grasp and to get around but i don't know i found nowadays maybe it's because of the lockdown and stuff i found people to be a lot more open to like getting to know people that they don't know before i think london one of the main things that was annoying about london in general even especially in my time when i was coming up in the scene and stuff um, especially in nightlife and whatnot people were very clicky people kind of kept their friends close to their chest or kept a you know kept a very close knit group of friends who were and you know who know who were um oddly enough always had really cool jobs or working in cool industries or had cool friends right it was never just some random guy that works in morrison's as always my friend works in id my friend is an editor at five it was always kind of that sort of nonsense wanky shit which i always hated but 
they were very clicky with their friends. But I find nowadays, maybe it's because of the influx of newer kids and younger kids who are coming up in the scene who are maybe not from London and are coming in a bit more wider. Because I find there's well, a lot of people that don't are not from here. People that are from outside of, Eng outside of London specifically or maybe parts of like Scotland, Ireland, Wales that are coming over to London to make a life. They're a lot more just, you know, eyes wide open, you know, arms are wide open and just ready to make new friends and shit. A lot more hospitable than people from here, which is maybe rubbing off on their natives. I don't know. But regardless... I feel like nowadays people are a lot more open to making new friends and make you not cringy to say, but having, you know, people that they can kind of collaborate with, quote unquote, which makes the scene, I think, a lot more healthier. Um, and it looks, makes it a lot more genuine. I think so. I saw even when I went out over the weekend, I saw a lot more groups of people hanging out getting to know each other in the smoking area getting to know each other in the toilets and shit you know just general shit but actual relationships are being kind of formed on that sort of dance floor which you don't really see a lot um you know back in my day it was maybe people trying to hook up or maybe trying to score drugs and whatnot people are really trying to make friends a lot and i think that's a really really good thing to see but you know there is no better in my head there's no bitter blow or more debilitating blow than a friend saying they don't want to hang out with you. It's probably better when they just kind of slowly but surely this is a self me or you kind of stopped calling each other. That's one thing. But when they just say no more, I do not want to be your friend. It's like off, off, off. It's probably the only thing that's feeling that's worse to that is probably when you're a dude and you've only been to like first base with a particular girl and then something happened and you fumbled the bag on the second base third base whatever and then you try and revive it <laughs> and it obviously doesn't work and you keep being a pest that you try to keep re relight that flame and you message them and then they just radio message leave you on scene and then block you <laughs> that's probably the only thing again it's not me i'm just talking you know hypothetically speaking that's probably the only kind of feeling that could maybe be similar to that or somewhere along that kind of line but I don't know, man. Let me know in the comments down below what, what do you think in it. What's worse? Friendship breakups or relationship breakups? I'd love to know your thoughts on that one. And then what else I do? Oh, yeah, I went to I went to Retextured, right? Retextured is a night that um, the Crank Brothers um, promotion arm put on. You know, the guys who are responsible for some very memorable parties here in London. And they put on together an event called Retextured. I think I went to one a couple of years ago, maybe before, maybe longer than that. Oof, 2018, they did a night where they had Nina Kravitz play at some Wolven Stowe assembly hall thing. And they had these other events in London. So I think they had it in like four different places or three different places across London. And unconventional spaces fully kitted out like i don't know how much money they must have spent on those nights but you know production was like oh, out of this out of this world um and the nina kravitz event was fucking sick like how they produced it they had like this massive led kind of screen i think was it a screen or was it a board let me see what i think it was let's say it was a screen that is massive rectangular screen behind her no no lights on the dj booth so it was just like her outline and then there'll be graphics kind of blaring up on the screen and then sometimes it'll be a silhouette of her kind of enlarged dancing and doing that crazy thing that she does behind the decks and it was fucking sick to watch and the sound was incredible bespoke stuff and the only thing that was a bit horrible about it was the bar the bar was crazy crazy expensive but you know again you gotta make your money back somehow but in terms of production and how they put it together seamless they even made the cloakroom situation work even though it was a tight space to go downstairs and all that stuff it was really well done so they got this other event called retextured Happened to get a free ticket courtesy of the tech, the techno um, WhatsApp group. It's an extension of the subreddit. There's a WhatsApp group for London people only. If you want it, I'll put an invite link in the description. So definitely join there if you're from London and you want to get to know people in the techno scene in London and you, or you just don't want to go out on your own or you want to maybe sell a ticket. No, actually, or you want to give away a ticket, which I've done a couple of times and I've got some free tickets on there. Um, you can grab a free ticket from there on the night if you want to go to an event or you can go meet some people up if you don't want to go on your own. It's a fairly sick crew, I think, overall in general on there. So definitely click the invite link and get involved if you haven't been before. But yeah, this event was an E1. It had actress Baby T, Daniel Avery, Jess, Crank Brother, and SPF DJ playing. Um, obviously went to go see Daniel Avery, Jess, and SPF DJ. Um, I saw the end of Daniel Avery. I saw most of Jess, and I saw a bit of SPF DJ before I had to duck out and get to work. But not a bad night, I have to say. The only issue is I have with it is E1. E1 is such a bizarre venue. Like, legitimately one of the most, like... What is quite, it's quite a schizo venue that's it it just doesn't have an identity it's a bit of an open slate right um during lockdown it it turned into like um 
a sort of weird table service kind of thing right with loads of tech house people playing then sometimes it's got like afterlife guys playing then it's got people like this playing right and then it's got i think there's nothing like they did where it was sort of like essentially just like an extension of an about blank lineup or something before it got cancelled right those kind of like berlin favorites so it's a very weird nut space um then sometimes they have like this you know crazy italian nights right where all the italians come out and support their favorite djs and shit but it's a bit strange and of course the security like there's like you know mm, it feels like there's like some some nights, especially if you go in this quiet. It feels like there's more security staff working there than actual clubbers. It's fucking crazy. Um, one of the best things I love about it is they've got a little chill out room. As you're approaching the entrance to your left, there's a little space there where you can kind of relax and chill out, which is quite nice. Kind of gather your thoughts, you know, whatever. If you don't want to go to smoking, you just want to relax and chill. That's the area to go in. Two main rooms, main room and the other room. I forgot what it's called. I think it's a warehouse room or something. Um, pretty decent obviously the main room with the massive speaker on the wall or the massive wall speaker wall that's one of the best places to be at make sure you carry your earplugs obviously if you're like me just fuck it out and just let your ears vibrate and then you feel the damage the next couple of days but it is what it is good lighting produced pretty well um they have a thing it seems like with um what you call it the stage was it stage on this oh the stage there was a lack of people standing behind the dj which i quite like sometimes i think it's good nowadays with the young kids it feels like they're a lot more they're a lot more they're a lot more willing to be club kids right so they kind of go out put on crazy outfits dance really great you know go at it for like the duration of the night it feels like they're on the dance floor it feels like it's like a mission for some of these kids to be on the dance floor for as long as possible right without going to the toilet they're like on it it's like sonic which is sick to see um and a lot of these guys have kind of you know stood behind the decks and decided to dance similar to what they do at possessions um so that kind of vibe is great it's great to see i'd much prefer to see the kind of kids that do those kind of stuff where they're like you know techno dancing behind a dj in those sort of raves as opposed to all the minimal tech house dudes from back in the day who would just be like standing me on a booth you know trying to look hot and trying to look cool like it was a vip section right similar to what you'd see from those martinez brothers sort of click and those kind of people so i preferred that but you know seeing it empty was a bit strange but still regardless good crowd decent venue i saw a good crowd um uh, in general the venue again still skits so the security are way too i think heavy-handed personally for me just for how the especially when you think of the people going i don't know it's hard to say in it because london's weird man be like i feel like in general us brits are a little bit reckless i think if you leave us to our own devices we'll burn that place down in a fucking hour maybe less than an hour so sometimes you need to be sort of babied in clubs in order for it just to function and as well you know people can't take chances anymore with all the stuff that's been going on in clubs and people overdosing and whatnot or taking bad shit so i definitely get it in some respects but in other respects it can feel a little bit it can be a bit of a vibe killer you know even if you're not on stuff just in general having people like you know searching you opening your wallet you know really getting into your pits and your balls and shit to search make sure you got nothing on you then you're going in and people are flashing the lights everywhere it's a bit it's a bit much but then to be fair to them i don't think i've ever it was a bit of a culture shock again not a culture shock but it was a bit of a wake-up call to to remind of what it's like to club in england as opposed to clubbing in places like berlin and stuff because obviously there the culture is more so you never do anything on the on the dance floor right it's all drugs and all that sort of like illicit undertakings always done in the toilets and it's an understanding that everyone has that that stuff is happening but you just kind of you're adults you just do what you do and because the clubs are open till late people are a little bit more i would say grown up about their drug taking it's not so excessive people don't get sloppy even the drinking wise if anything you see more people drunk than fucking hammered when it comes to drugs out i think so when you're out in berlin and places like that maybe i'm not going to the right places but i've seen people more sloppy drunk than i've seen them really you know caned caned out of their mind but here in the uk we have two issues we have you know generally we're a country of alcoholics and then secondly our clubs and bars aren't open long enough so people have to get it in really quickly so when I was back on the dance floor at E1, it was quite a wake-up call to see people on the dance floor, you know, taking bumps and stuff, you know, like quite openly. Of course, you know, making sure the security guards didn't see them, but it was a thing. Like people weren't, you know, boom, 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 which was odd because I think, hmm, 
would you want to see people take you're taking trust this or you just want to be doing it in private you know you don't want, i don't know there's something weird about that but regardless you know they were kids so let them enjoy themselves so that was interesting to see but so which, which led me to believe which which obviously is a follow-on to the point i said about the security guards you know maybe they're over maybe they are heavy-handed but maybe there's a reason to be because you know literally everyone on the dance floor was taking bumps of their shit which is fine do your thing um the dancing was cool the music was cool spf dj smashed it um, jazz was really impressive I've, obviously I've seen loads of SPF DJ streams and shit and listened to her mixes so I kind of got an idea what she's about but jazz was very very impressive I think if I'm not mistaken what do I oh what's it? is it Malajunta's jazz is that she, is she part of Malajunta or am I not am I mistaken either way I think I might have discovered jazz from Hall as well Berlin so she was great to see live um, amazing amazing set and just in general good fun crowd i gotta be honest very strange craft crowd to be fair very young crowd that's from something i very i did notice i think a lot of these guys playing especially the girls are definitely the new favorites of this newer generation and they came to see and support them um so if th this was probably the first time in a long time i felt very old in the club i've definitely noticed that i was like jesus man this is a very cool young hip crowd and i'm definitely not cool young and hip anymore so it was cool to have a little bit of distance that way and just enjoy it as a sort of gig like i said before i think the lockdown has definitely kind of matured my going out my kind of clubbing experience or going out experience if anything i usually if anything i'm more prone to getting caned and fucked up when i'm going to like a pirate studios to go mix or if i'm going to like a bar or a cocktail bar or something right it's not that i'm not doing it at the same level as i would doing clubs beforehand clubs would be like the place where i just get absolutely wobbly or now what i might do going forward as well is just like you know even though I was taking a piss out of ticketed events, is maybe leave all that stuff for ticketed events, you know what I mean? Big events that I want to go to, festivals, maybe trips abroad and shit, that might be a place where you get mouldy. But when it comes to just going to see people play for here and there, I'd much prefer to do it. Because again, I, I was there for like a total of like four hours, do you know what I mean? I went to go see a couple of people playing and I basically left at about five, I think, or half five. So I wasn't there too long. Um, yeah, I think two to like half five, I think I was uh, two two to half five i think i think about that but yeah um decent night very much enjoyed it again um probably the oldest i've ever felt in a nightclub which is a good thing i think again um it's good to see the young kids doing the thing um like i said i think they're far more better influence on the nightlife scene than we were i think they enjoy themselves a lot more they get dressed up as well they're really into the whole club kid thing um they dance a lot um they're just on it do you know what i mean really really on it i think that was, that was a very very fun group to go and see um it was just a shame that i kind of was sticking out like a sore farm i felt like i was walking past crowds groups of little young kids thinking that they were judging my outfit and shit i felt so uncool it was horrible but yeah big up them regardless um yeah enjoyed it and again just well produced night in terms of production i think the sound was great the lighting was great you know crank brothers retexture they always do a great job so definitely something to kind of keep an eye on but again like i said e1 is a very schizophrenic venue man they don't really not really sure what they want to be they're a bit all over the place but you know in terms of kind of distance from where i live and ease of getting there and familiarity of the venue i can't complain really so big up that that was one of the main occasions that i went to what else I want to touch on quickly? Let's move on from there. Do, 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 do. For whatever reason, my laptop is kind of freeze framing all the time. I don't know why. Okay, cool. And then quickly go into this one. This is a story obviously that broke over the weekend, last couple of days. This is courtesy of BBC. It says here, Liverpool's hospital's women's explosion. Liverpool women's hospital explosion. Police named suspect killed in blast. Obviously, there was a terrorist attack that happened over the weekend um, involving a cab driver and a hospital in Liverpool. And unfortunately, the cab driver is still alive, but it looks like the suspect, the guy that obviously blew himself up, is not. And it's the courtesy of uh, BBC. It says, the man who died when a homemade bomb exploded outside Liverpool has been named. The 32-year-old passenger in a taxi were, when his device blew up shortly before 11 GMT on Remember Sunday. The driver, David Perry, which is this guy here, right? Absolute hero. Um escaped before the car caught fire and has since been discharged from hospital four men arrested in liverpool under the terrorism act have been released from police custody without charge meanwhile the uk terror threat level has been raised to severe officers believe our our sweet our sweet mean 
Al Sweenmeen lived in a house in Sutcliffe Street in Kensington area, Liverpool, where counter-terrorism police officers had carried out raids earlier. Jesus. Police said he had recently rented an address in Rutland Avenue near Sefton Park in City, which has also been searched by officers. Our focus in Rutland Avenue address were that we have continued to recover significant items as detective. Any information that the public may have about Al Sweeney, um, Al Sweelmeen, how do you say? Al Sweelmeen, Al Sweelmeen, no matter how small may be a great assistance to us. In later statement, police said that they had made significant progress since Sunday and had a great understanding of the component parts of the device, how they became obta- how they were obtained and how the parts are likely to have been assembled. Now, one quick thing I have to say about this explosion, because you see it in the video, they've got a little video here where they kind of show it, is that one thing that you notice, and again, this is kind of a naive thing and a dumb thing to say, so just allow me. But whenever people make homemade bombs, or you see video footage of homemade bombs going off vis-a-vis what you see in movies, the explosions are never as severe. Again, I know they're going to have an impact, and for sure, if it, if it was packed with like screws and shit and shrapnel, you know what I mean, it's going to damage people. But they're never as explosive as what the movies make out. When the movies see somebody, when the movies in a, in a movie, if a bad guy is making a homemade explosion or homemade bomb, sorry, the explosion is fucking crazy, right? It can take down a two-story house or something or building, right? It's flipping nuts. But when some, when you see somebody actually making one in real life, the explosion itself is a little bit, little underwhelming, right? It obviously destroyed the entire taxi, but in terms of it being able to blow up you know in the entire front room of a house or something or you know um cause significant damage to our home i'm a little bit dubious of it again may just maybe my you know naive thinking from the outside looking in but still heroic act from the taxi driver who allegedly locked the guy into his taxi so he couldn't escape and then the bomb went off so it didn't injure anyone and then guys are on the outside here running to assist like humans are awesome man really awesome the explosion goes off and the guy literally runs in to help the driver get out of the car. Like just in general, just amazing, amazing stuff to see, man. Like bloody hell, absolutely crazy. But imagine lying up in the hospital and hearing that boom go off as you're lying down, recovering from whatever you're recovering from, surgery, whatever it may be. Just imagine the driver getting consoled by somebody on the outside. They'll see the guy inside probably dead. They're trying to pull him out. I guess the car's now lights on fire. It's fucking crazy, absolutely crazy. But again, big up the driver because that is such a heroic act because usually in that circumstance when you see something like that happening in your back seat, your fight or flight senses will tell you just to kind of get out and save yourself. But he had the wherewithal to kind of lock the doors so he couldn't get out to hurt anybody else, which would have, you know, then maybe resulted in him dying too, along with the along with the passenger, which is nuts to think of it that way. But it, that is the truth. He kind of essentially decided that he was either going to help a lot of people survive or that he was going to end up. No, he decided a twofold. He was going to save people by keeping him indoors. And that also could result in him losing his own life. You know, innocuous day on a flipping Sunday, driving a taxi, manning a business, waiting in a cup of a taxi bay of a hospital to keep take people back and forth and he still have the wherewithal to do that it's just amazing to see it says here al sween is believed to have been manufactured and brought a device into a taxi police um said he picked up he was picked up from a rutland avenue area and also be taken up to about 10 minutes away before the bomb exploded he's not believed to have been previously known by the mi5 four men arrested under terrorism acts in the kensington area of liverpool free age between 21 and 22 29 who were held on sunday and a 20 year old man who has been detained on monday assistant chief constable russ jackson said on monday evening following interviews with the arrested men we are satisfied that the accounts have provided that they have released from police Saturday. It is likely to be some time, perhaps many weeks, until we are confident and understanding of what has taken place, and that police have considerable resources and staff deployed to understand how this device was built and who and if anyone was ever involved. And I was just thinking myself as well, this must be such a thankless task to be in the MI5 and try to stop terrorism attacks before they happen, right? Because essentially, you can't arrest somebody for, as kind of sick as it is, you can't really arrest somebody for, you know, looking at terrorist terrorist type material or going to maybe websites and forums where people are sympathetic sympath sympathetic sympathetic or whatever it may be that word is to terrorist motives and shit you maybe have to wait until they you know decide to go on trips to i don't know yemen and shit or syria wherever it may be right these places where they these guys are right or places where like the ISO is and whatnot you maybe have to wait for them to buy certain materials and even then they buy the materials and until they can put it together into an actual you know explosive or you know, into an actual device can you actually arrest them can you detain them what can you do as well and i'd imagine resources wise money wise how do they do that resources to be monitoring these people 24 7 probably not maybe even 10 hours a day is probably a 
bit too sh too much to kind of um point that direction and yeah man crazy and again would you think liverpool would be a place where there were a lot of guys that were sympathetic to terrorists you know motives and agendas and shit i wouldn't again i don't really know too much about terrorism myself but there wouldn't be the first place i'd think of especially outside of england there's also outside, outside london so there's many places you know places like nottingham kind of strikes to mind first bradford and shit where there's a big asian population right but you wouldn't necessarily go straight to flipping liverpool as a place where you would find a lot of people terrorist sympathizers and whatnot so yeah big up the driver still um absolute hero um the taxi driver locking the guy in like that and again investigation will continue it'll be long and far reaching with probably a lot of kind of um invasive um effects with us general population people right we're definitely going to feel the brunt of it in terms of the government then signing off for more you know measures to kind of be a bit more intrusive and to dig into our personal files to make sure this stuff sort of doesn't happen but i guess this is what it is to living in the 21st century in it moving on from that what else do we have here b -b 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 why is my computer going slow today i don't know it's doing me a mazza hopefully it's not going to be too ready ready but i'm hoping hoping not hoping not but from what i can see in the preview image it's looking mad slow but let's just hope it doesn't let's just hope it doesn't um yeah then continuing on um if things couldn't get worse from some of my colleagues or some of my people and friends out there in mainland europe it looks like dutch clubs are being forced to close at night time as government orders a free week lockdown i was thinking about it the other day about lockdowns and shit and how drab and dreary that whole occasion was but i also was one i was also kind of thinking to myself you know what i've kind of memory hold that time i'm not sure if you guys have done the same but i've essentially memory hold the entire lockdown experience and i've kind of maybe summed it up to a or maybe yeah summed it up to maybe a couple of weeks but i don't really remember the entirety of it because i don't want to remember it because it was such a drab dreary and negative time in most of our lives so i can only imagine how discouraging saddening and depressing it must be to go through another lockdown again especially a three week one because there's no difference between a three week and a month you might as well just do four weeks why not especially these ones because most likely they'll be like it's three weeks we're going to have a review after the second week but most likely they'll extend into four anyway so they're just trying to again they play these weird little games with you to kind of um make sure the public doesn't kind of panic and get freaked out which is always annoying i much prefer when governments are just straight up and honest with their pop with their with their citizens but you know i guess they kind of have to do these things because they have to i don't know whatever but it's an article courtesy of ra dutch club forced to close at night time as government orders a three-week lockdown the restrictions come into effect at 6 p.m on november 13th so they've been already in effect for a couple of days it says here in a press conference earlier today prime minister mark root um, confirmed that the three-week lockdown will come into effect at 6 p.m tomorrow this week the netherlands hit a record number of new cases of covid19 again cases not deaths as they always do and um, this is yet another blow to night clubs which not only opened um, late september last week um, which, only, which only reopened late September last week the face marks have once again made a mandatory in other places the odd thing as well the saddening thing about Holland if I'm not mistaken they had a brief reopening which is when Dixon played an amazing set in that club in Holland I forgot what it was called but it's a video of it online where I think a dude in a wheelchair gets picked up and he's crowd surfing and shit right it's fucking great venue really amazing looking then I think a couple of days after they get into lockdown again so just as though they're kind of getting their feet wet and getting back into the clubbing space they didn't have to kind of get locked down again and then this is another thing as well that I guess they reopened and now they're getting locked down again so it's just kind of back and forth back and forth back and forth um, the partial lockdown means bars restaurants and non-essential shops will have to close between 6 and 7 p.m sports events can't have spectators and stands and people are encouraged to work from home as much as possible a maximum of four visitors are home at recommended schools theaters and cinemas will remain open the government's website has a full list of new restrictions according to reuters the problem is 85 percent of dutch population has now been fully vaccinated 85 percent sorry that's a lot a lot more than i expected it to be um the netherlands is now a, the first country western country to western europe to go back to lockdown regulations just since the summer the guardian reports and this is the problem i have with it the main problem I have is that for the most part, none of this stuff works in it. And there's never an end in sight. I've not heard one person so far say, or you know, people, especially in government, say, hey, we're going to do this thing. We're going to do this, instill this measure, instill this mandate. And the hope is the kind of carrot at the end of this is that once this is done, you won't have to wear a face mask ever again right this is the kind of prize at the end of it it's never that it's always just this understanding or this kind of you know 
acquire understanding, underlying understanding that we're just going to have to live in this perpetual face mask wearing covid vaccine booster society right where there is no measure that can be put into place that's ever going to eradicate the virus but then there's always these kind of stipulations in place that also prevent you from kind of living your life it's just like oh it's just too much man because lockdowns don't work we know that already they don't work right largely they don't work they kind of help to kind of stem the tide a bit and obviously help with limiting the cases, which obviously helps to limit the amount of hospital admissions to make sure they're not overflowed. You know, the standard rhetoric people keep saying again and again. But in terms of stopping and halting the virus, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing, right, in the grand scheme of things, because we still have to go into lockdown, right, in the grand scheme of things. Masks as well are the same sort of thing. They help, but to a certain extent. Same with the vaccine. It helps, but to a certain extent. I guess vaccines are more so, so it's not like a lethal, so you're not being administered until between now, perhaps be on the ventilator and shit, because that's not fun. And so you don't lose your sense of smell and shit, and people still have not recovered from that, or your sense of taste. Cool. But in terms of con categorically stopping the virus, these are things that don't happen. And for the most part, lockdowns are maybe the most ineffective of all those measures masks there's a big argument for them to be had um vaccines big argument to be had for them even boosters are a big argument to be had even though i'm not going to get one i definitely agree with that one but lockdowns are f very very clumsy very draconian and very ineffective they don't do anything if anything they kind of help to maybe drive dissent right they make people be a little bit more um willing to break the rules a little bit more risque look what happened with playgraves a lot of the reason why playgraves happened was because it was so fucking drab negative and dreary right you'd go out to parts of london especially places that are meant to be busy like central london or where you maybe go to your main shopping area strip wherever it may be and it was a complete you know desert like no one was out right no shops were open it was it was quite depressing to see because immediately you started thinking about the amount of people that had lost out on jobs people that weren't able to support their families all these sort of things are kind of running through your head so it was no surprise that some people who had the means to or maybe it wasn't even means to there's a lot of people in the beginning of playgrounds who were putting on parties in tulum and places in bali and shit right um in places in mexico and bali because they were rich and they could kind of escape the drib and drab you know a reality of the uk but if you didn't have the money people were still putting on house parties and warehouse raves and shit and you know playgrave type events just so they can kind of unplug and get away from the cold heart reality that they're going through day by day so that in, in my opinion was a direct result or consequence of lockdowns because people couldn't handle being under lockdown daily so they needed some respite and the only respite you could get was by getting blackout drunk and super high listening to really loud electronic music that would be the best way to go and do it so i think lockdowns just encourage bad behavior they encourage people to kind of cut corners to go out of their friends houses and organize house parties and just you know just do everything you're not meant to do in a lockdown um i don't know man but then again in this in this fact in, if you're the government what do you do you see numbers going up and in general most people especially jobs i think i've seen this we've all kind of seen examples of this now with the serious succession which is absolutely incredible but what we're seeing with the series of succession especially in this season season three is that they've got an incident happening that's essentially their version of a me too or cancel culture sort of event and we're seeing it from the perspective of a global organizer a global corporation right and we're seeing that really all of the things that bother the public in terms of morality principles ethics and whatever it may be they don't really play any part in the decision makings of these corporations most of it is all just self-preservation they're all trying to make sure they keep their jobs they're trying to make sure they don't study their reputations and no one wants to be left with a kind of smudge or a mark or a cloud over their name so for the most part if you're the government and you're trying to you know make sure that you don't go out you know you don't go you don't you don't crash out or you don't kind of go out of this or you don't be remembered in history books as the prime minister mayor governor or whoever that was responsible or kind of presided over the covid you know approach to your country and then you know many many thousands of people died maybe in the millions no one wants that on their books so they'll do whatever they can to ensure that they don't have that on their book which might mean doing stuff like you know why sweeping you know restrictions like lockdowns or whatnot just to ensure that they kind of stem the flow in some way shape or form because that's the only thing they know how to do um but it's just funny man all these it's funny that on one side all these kind of tired and burnt out methods to kind of combat the pandemic or to combat the virus 
are okay and widely accepted but the moment people start talking about stuff like either either mectin and all that sort of shit it then goes into the kind of cuckoo land conspiracy theories bro science or sort of lane. don't get me wrong the people that talk about ivermectin again are annoying but it's just funny how on one side it's it's okay to talk about boosters and vaccines and lockdowns but on the other side talk about alternative medicines and you know vitamin d and working out and all that joe rogan sauna shit suddenly people start looking at you like a bit of a kook um i don't know but again, um, thoughts and feelings go out to my Netherland brothers and sisters. Hope you guys are keeping your head up. For those of you that care about night and clubbing, hopefully you're keeping your head up. For those of you that don't care, you're probably going to think it's a welcome respite, especially for such a densely populated city. You're probably willing and happy that you're getting some sort of break from having people breathe down your necks constantly, which is probably great. But for everybody else who kind of survives off the heartbeat of the nightlife that runs through that city, it's going to be a dark time for you, isn't it? It's going to be a dark, dark time, but hopefully get out of it at the other side. Hopefully get out of it at the other side. Next on the list, we have, yeah, we have this. Let's talk about this, actually. Where should I put it and put this here as well? Because I want to talk about this second. So this is a little review, courtesy of Mix Mag Magazine, about the Body Movement Festival that happened a few weeks ago, right? And about how successful it was and all that good stuff. And I think I mentioned it before on my podcast before, right? About how cool it was to see all these alternative club nights and festivals and stuff pop up over the last, what, 18 months, it feels like, as a response to, I think as a kind of weird response to this kind of constant conversation that happens about having, you know, not enough variety on the lineups in terms of genders and sexual orientations and backgrounds and whatnot instead of complaining and whining and moaning about this stuff on social media a lot of people have decided to kind of gather their resources their friends their local community and actually do something about it themselves and put on these really cool events that for the most part from what i can see have been very very well received by the public and have been a resounding success within that little niche and you're hoping that you know as time goes by and people become more aware of these little subcultures and groups and niches that exist within dance music that kind of form the overall kind of patistry that makes this such a beautiful and rich sort of scene that more people will get kind of hip to it and it will kind of progress to the point where these people will also be on the sub big lineups where they're paying you 10 grand per gig and shit because that's where we're going to get to because as great as these events are you also want to see some parity in terms of the levels of pain all that stuff going forward so this is courtesy of Mixed Magazine Body Movement Festival was a landmark occasion for queer self-expression. It says Hackney's Body Movement Festival, um, the first queer electronic music festival, um, is a landmark occasion taking place in early October. With the festival season shifting into autumn by a late of reopening of nightlife. The sold out event, founded by DJ Sarosi and Little Gay Brothers Clayton Wright, features 20 collectives, 16 spaces, and an astonishing lineup of DJ performers and artists. A rush of sweet century overload is felt upon arrival by body movers in anticipation of the day spent reveling in music, dance, hedonism, and laughter. Arriving at the ticketing area of the festival, the celebrations immediately feels uh, immediately feel special the sunlight reflects off the shining clothing garments worn by the festival goes blah, blah blah beasts are audible in the distance dissonant sounds bouncing off each other one pair embrace and declare the excitement to be able to dance together for those attendees body movements and bodies have something greater than the festival i was told so it's a gay club culture is left for the night time Okay, let's do that again. For some attendees, body movement embodies something greater than most festivals in the calendar, bringing together their queer identities, friendships, and love for dance music. Gay club culture is left for the nighttime. I was told by someone I met at a bar, well, hello, I'm here. I'm in the sun, showing off my legs. I'm ready to go have a good time. I'm tired of waiting until dark. It's like waiting in the shadows despite being October. Revelers show skin soak up in last summer rays. That's actually interesting because I remember listening to a one podcast once where people were talking about club culture and about, you know, obviously it's foundations in the queer scene and whatnot especially in the gay club culture and some girl popped up and said she finds it sometimes annoying and frustrating how there aren't a lot of club nights or clubs that are more catered towards the lesbian side of things and it got me thinking to huh that's interesting because i wonder if like on the same side of gay guys saying hey we don't feel comfortable in going to like straight bars so we got our own little scene where we kind of feel comfortable doing our own little thing but then also you have to imagine a lot of the gay clubs are sort of seed i don't say seedy but they're kind of you know mostly catered to the nightlife they're mostly catered to kind of after dark hours and you wouldn't imagine a lot of the guys that go to gay clubs will be that comfortable going to some of the big marquee festivals that exist because it's a very bro energy right these kind of marquee festivals 
couples there's a lot of girls there's a lot of guys but it's a very what that term they say it's a very cis straight sort of vibe in general there's not a lot of kind of um queer camp vibes when you go to a normal festival so maybe or when you go to like a kind of, you know a general everyday sort of festival so maybe it does make sense for these festivals to exist because they are kind of one of only a few options available um where people from the queer scene can go and celebrate in that kind of sense because obviously when you go to places in europe you know mainland europe has many dave town festivals you know where you can go as a queer person to have fun and obviously feel comfortable but i think in england there is a little bit of a there's a little bit of a gap in the market and i think that's where maybe these guys have maybe decided and they've kind of obviously been able to hit out of the park it says yeah this is what hackney wick is used to look like so the one is um east london local attendee it, this isn't what it used to look like well it's true this is an interesting thing about hackney wick this is a very good point hackney wick has changed like think about let's think about it this way if you've been to if you're into the color factory right that's in hackney wick that used to formerly be known as Mixed Garage. I'm pretty sure the people that are programming Color Factory are not the same people that used to program Mixed Garage. So it's the same space, just different people have taken over it. And it seems like they're very much going for whatever the opposite of Mixed Garage was. So the entire area, because for the most part, the yard was the kind of alternative space where a lot of the kind of alternative nights were kind of being held you know and then the kind of conventional club nights were mostly being held at mix but now mix is sort of doing now the color factory is doing both at the same time they're got, they're still hitting at the park with the kind of conventional you know a's tier b tier dj nights and they're also doing all the little kind of alternative nights that kind of speak to a niche and they're doing it at a very 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 high level but also it's kind of bringing an entirely different energy to that little kind of hackney work space which is great to see because there's loads of little bars that popped up during lockdown as well it just gives that place a rich sound so by the time you're jumping off the train the overground at hackney station and you're walking down and you're kind of perusing and trying to decide where to go there's a, just a general great visual stimuli to see as you're kind of perusing around like people wearing different clothing different colors and creed sexualities like, it's just great to see it's a far nicer place to be in in terms of a night out than it was maybe prior it's still as good don't i think yeah i won't say better it's, it's a different it's different let's not say better it's different i think both have di both have their pluses it says yeah, um we've also seen lots of diff um loads of these businesses suffer so it's nice to have organizers are not leaving them out she has a reference to 16 academic venues hosting various collectives um he she day sophia kearney says the same um as we stand in the dark in hand and sway to the beats played by wax wings at the lord napla star wax wings and sophia both cherished an amazing occasion following that there have been a tough year and a half it's nice to be able to see people have free reign over their day their choice and activity her statement rings true people have four autonomy to attend whatever event that they want and listen to whoever they want seems like a perfect personification of what the day represents coming together after lockdown to be free unite and listen to music and again you can't be mad at that and that's the beauty of a london club night look at all these different people from all these different walks of light just enjoying themselves and having an absolute jolly good time um da, 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 da. a founder clayton wright says he felt both fear and excitement when planning and hosting this event um uh noting that there's a lot of pressure to get the right because of the sheer amount of people that he feels obligated to represent i just want to make people happy he says collaboration and solidarity is what i want to achieve at the end of the day clayton is keen to hear many hear my perspective as a young queer person with limited experience in the club raven festival scene and wants to ensure that people like myself can use the event as a learning experience too oh that's great to hear dj service mirrored the sentiment during a conversation that La Teresa showing that there are several acts present who she herself has not seen and that she's excited to check out and learn about as opposed to just on Instagram I'm just glad we're here and we've got to make this happen for this reason and that's what I think again is the beauty I think of what's happened I think because there's such been such a negative reaction to like the general club scene and the festival lineups and all that stuff what's been going on gender line blah 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 I think because it's such a visceral anger at not being represented because again maybe I'm coming from a different point of view being a DJ and I've seen how hard that is to be but it must be really frustrating and somewhat rage inducing to see yourself not being reflected in a clubbing space when you know there's a lot of people like you that also are on that dance floor to not you see us represented on the you know in a large scale on the lineups and also not being represented in terms of parties being catered directly to you so to finally get somebody that kind of makes something that is specific to your needs and to your area of interest is something that you're definitely going to jump all over and be on so i definitely understand in that respect so big up them for actually answering the call and just doing the damn thing instead of complaining about because again the complaining thing on social media is one is easy and something that kind of 
comes naturally to a lot of people because that's what these platforms are basically there for but in my experience or from what i feel I personally i don't think they're constructive or helpful in any way shape or form because these people they're complaining about these big organizations these festival lineups these clubs they don't care right they're only gonna don't 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 get twisted sooner rather than later when this sort of stuff starts to make big money all those big festivals will suddenly start to care about these people that are playing in these lineups right they'll start to suddenly want to promote diversity they'll suddenly start having topless guys with nipple piercings on their flyers and shit they'll start doing it for sure but until it, until it doesn't make money it doesn't make sense to them so if anything instead of complaining and shouting into the void just do your own thing set your own stand and then what you can do by building your own platform is that you can then dictate your terms when those guys come calling you can say hey okay if you want to book me this is my terms here's how much i want you to pay me i want parity with the same other people that are playing as well i want represent i want it basically you can go in and start being you know just strong arming them and saying if i'm playing i want a girl before me and a girl after me fuck it i mean just some straight fuck shit you can do that um once you've already proved the concept and you've obviously got your own thing going and i think look at what possession have done say what you want about some of their other stuff that they've gotten up to but in terms of proving a the concept they've proved the concept of their little niche and now they can kind of go in and just walk into a room and and just kind of dictate terms because they're the ones that are bringing the party they're bringing the reputation they're bringing the name that already carries a bit of weight and i think these guys can do the same thing with their body movements festival i think going forward um Da, 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 da. what's that news that daytime is one of london's most spoken about collectors in 2021 are taking over old street brewery spreads the dimly lit venue is packed with daytime as regulars and showcases a colorful set by anu and a fun free back-to-back -back by gracie t and dj pre again people i've never heard of so it's fucking great to see featuring south asian classic samples and cheeky bangers remix and new sports a dupata representing a south asian heritage at a festival of queerness dj pre and gracie t long time instagram best friends tell me that they've been at Body Moon Festival is the second time they've ever met in person and their first ever better back experience. The DJs proudly wear cultural clothing, spend their day exploring the other stages all while getting to know each other in real life and having a boogie over the yard, courtyard where Big Dag Energy had packed up the space. You can't go wrong with that, innit? Just imagine that visually seeing this, right? Seeing these South Asian artists wearing their cultural garments alongside Big Dag Energy stuff. Like, it's just, this is what you want to see. And again, they're doing it on their own accord, not screaming and shouting at these big festivals to represent them, proving the concept, and then obviously build up from there. So it's fucking great to see, man. So again, Big Up Body Moves Festival. I'm not going to read the entire thing. You can check it out yourself. I'll put the link in the show notes for you to see. But again, this is what I love about the club scene now in London. It's so rich, so vibrant, so many different people that go out now it's not just the same old tired heads and this sort of stuff is also being plopped up on the same platform as all the other stuff do you know i mean it's not just the same old tired people and tired flipping you know promoters and all that stuff and lineups that are being propped up it's good to see it's just fresh it's new and out of this we're going to have some new stars some new people to kind of look up to people to kind of you know rally behind and all that good stuff so i'm really really for it so yeah big up body moving festival um wishing those guys and girls um more and more success in the future in it and then uh, this brings me neatly on neatly on to this other topic that i want to speak about courtesy of a tweet responding to a tweet that went on viral on um, dj twitter over the last couple of weeks that's the thing right there is techno twitter and there is dj twitter that kind of exists where people complain about you know whatever but anyway this is an interesting tweet that this um lady called uh, josephine cruz who on twitter is called jm jmkm right jmkm put this following tweet up which i have some thoughts about so it says the following do men ever look at dj flyers and think wow that's a lot of men i'm on here with and she says um the following i've muted this but i'm just going to leave this here and it's about only seven percent of of artists have an inclusion right okay cool so off the off rip i definitely have an issue with this idea that that it's just a men thing i think i think i said before right especially from my level of coming up as a dj because again I, i've described it as tiers right i'd say let's say abc to keep it simple but within each tier there's also sub tiers so it's like free i'd say middle no bottom middle up higher so there's a, if an a b -er, there's three tiers b tier you know and so on and i would say i'm probably occupying the c third tier right in that respect or maybe a, if you wanted a d tier maybe the top of the d tier but essentially that means you know you're playing maybe let's say two times per month you get paid anywhere between 50 to uh, you know 150 euros per gig you know that kind of basic stuff it's mostly you're playing in like bars in the corner on some 
you know midi player or like a rinky dink cdjs or cdjs for the most part but not nightclub nightclubs and obviously it progresses in terms of fees and you know regularity and maybe in terms of going different places maybe booking agency but you know what i mean right but in general i've found again in my 10 plus years of promoting and djing that the issue isn't necessarily that there's a lot of men or this mostly a gender thing it's mostly i felt like there's a lack of variety and just inclusion or just a kind of a route for new web djs to come through regardless forget if you're a man or a woman it's just very difficult to make it in djing at all just in general especially in the uk especially especially in london because you know you chuck a stone out your window and you hit somebody that knows a dj the level of djing in london is super high the proficiency of djing is just incredible you only have to look at some nondescript person you've never heard on a boiler room or something to see how good people are here in london right people here in london are really really good and then you look at little genres like drum and bass grime funky house garage now that's recoming there's loads of really good people who are just playing pacific music in that kind of little niche you've never heard of who are absolutely killing on their little local scene who no one actually has heard of in any way shape or form so i think in general there's a real issue in the UK in by and large because we don't really have a big or vibrant residence culture for the most part maybe with the exception of the last couple of years it felt like most clubs were catered toward big ticket um, events where they kind of hire and get you know the best DJs who are maybe voted in the top 100 list to play events and then they sell tickets accordingly and then you try and stack up your lineup to be as beefy as possible so you can ensure that you get a sellout so with that being said it's very unlikely that you're going to go book a C tier DJ to play an event like that because you want to ensure you sell tickets because one of the hardest things to do again me being a promoter for you know a very long time maybe for a period of like five years right I was doing the promotion thing it's very difficult to get people to come out to your events I found it hard to get people to come to a free bar right a bar that was free entry to come in the drinks were fairly well priced sometimes I had tokens I would be willing to give out for free you know because I was high and dumb and really trying to make friends and shit and people would still not want to come right it's hard to get them out of their seats and how their houses i wouldn't imagine how much difficult it is to get them out now with this proliferation of events with people maybe changing their habits of going out because of lockdown it's just difficult so because of that promoters are put into a corner where they have to kind of make sure that they're breaking even making sure they're making money or whatever it may be so they then go and book the same old tired faces who know they're going to sell tickets but for punters it can be boring and you know a bit uninspired because it's the same five to ten people being booked or rotated around the same club nights the same festival circuits but the reason being is because these guys and girls sell tickets they get people through the gates to get people bums on seats and they ensure that these promotions can keep running and that these clubs can stay afloat and that bartenders can get paid you know all this sort of shit that's the that's the crux of it but obviously there needs to come there needs to be some give and take. There needs to become. There needs to be some middle ground. There needs to be people. There needs to be meeting in the middle a little bit. I'm not saying you have to book, you know, an entire lineup of like C tier DJs at a big club for Fabric, but sprinkle them in a bit. Maybe have a residence program which they have now at Fabric, which they've had for a while. Don't get me wrong, but you know, promote maybe a residence only night. Maybe don't have so much emphasis put on big ticket you know djs coming through and playing maybe have nights where you have nights where you don't announce a venue and just people come play i think fold have one on sunday right called unfold where essentially they just have residents and friends of friends playing and you just come you party for the however long it's open and you go home but there's no kind of like under there's no kind of expectation of it being a big person playing on a sunday it's just local people trying to get their name up and hopefully through that avenue you can maybe include them on some other lineups that you want to do maybe further down the line that a little bit more highbrow or a little bit more you know higher maybe a bigger ticket dj comes to come in and you can go from there sort of thing going forward and i think that's always been the main issue it's less a gender thing more so a lack of opportunity for people coming up to get away through because i'd imagine there's as for as many girls out there who are thinking oh it's a, it's a proper boys club which obviously there's no denying it is look at the nylumps for the most part they're majority male-led but also you have to imagine there's as for as many guy, girls that they complain there's probably just as many dudes complaining that they have no route to get in if especially if you don't know anybody especially if you don't lick anyone's asses you don't you don't you're not you're not that good with networking and shit and you're just kind of doing your own thing chilling um it's going to be difficult do you know what I mean to kind of get through and to kind of make your way through especially if you don't make music also it's very very hard but i also understand the plight and the struggles that must exist if you're a woman coming up because if men are finding it difficult to break through just imagine how difficult it is to be a woman and to try and break through into the dj world like how do you start like where do you go 
do you try and do you try and kind of pally up with the female collective or do you feel if you go with a female collective that that's maybe kind of hampers how you come in and doesn't give you a chance to kind of make your own lane and kind of come and you know make you i don't know you know what i mean maybe that that might be a bit of an issue there um where do you go where you feel safe where you're going to feel looked after where you're going to feel like you got an opportunity to come through you have to kind of play that whole weird kind of sexual tension game thing let it be known that you're not on that vibe but then obviously that might then hamper how you're maybe received in certain spaces because some people might then start spreading rumors about you that you're hard to work with you know these really strange things that go on but one thing that i've always had an issue with in general when it comes to the gender lineups or in general when it comes to lineups especially especially some of these bigger ticket events like especially some of these big tech house events kind of thing. let's look at those sort of things because those are the major culprits of this sort of stuff right you look at some of these pictures of these events especially edm festivals and you see a real richness of people that go it's not just dudes this it's quite i would say maybe 70 30 when it comes to gender split maybe 70 percent dudes 30 percent girls but there's a lot of girls that go and show out like they go and get dressed up they all the great outfits they're scantily clad they're willing to take pictures they're really out to have a great time i refuse to believe that none of those girls have gone to those events and thought you know what this that dance music thing has really bitten me man i want to get involved i want to make music i want to set my own promotion thing i want to dj for sure they do exist because i know that's what happened to me i only had to go out to a couple of clubs to suddenly think oh i want to put on my own nights i want to dj too it, it happens very quickly so i'm sure once you get interested in those kind of things in your girl for sure you've looked at it and you're like oh i want to get involved so the only issue i have with those events those kind of big tech house events is that why don't your lineups at least reflect a little bit of your crowd like it's not even like the the crowd the crowd isn't even that diverse but there is a lot of p different type of people there different type of people that are coming up in different type of scenes and spaces different sort of influences why are they relate why are they kind of reflected why is the same 10 people playing all the time the bros club is just boring and anyone that's been to a club night where it's heavily sort of like leaning on the women's side of things you can you know how much different and i'd say quote unquote better it is than a conventional dude's night just just from the sound you can already tell as you're walking through the the club that there's a there's probably more women playing on this lineup as opposed to dudes maybe it's not so much kind of like you know broing out on certain tunes or whatnot they're kind of playing to the crowd they have a little bit more fun they're not taking themselves so seriously it's just a different sort of vibe and you know what you got ambiance that exists when these girls are on the lineups but i don't know man like i said i think i'm, I'm conflicted like i said because i think it's difficult for everybody to dj to come up in the djing scene and to get actual big gigs and bad good places because it's in my opinion it's one of the most easiest professions to get involved in when it comes to music right you, to learn you know from in terms of learning an instrument djing is flipping piss poor easy um it's also a quick way to kind of not quick way but it's a good way to get famous for not being that talented when it comes to being able to play an instrument too that's something that needs to be noted because obviously essentially you're playing other people's music so the barrier of entry is really low equipment wise the barrier of entry is out on the floor because you can essentially get apps on your ipad where you can learn to dj you can get midi players for like 200 pounds from pioneer and shit that are fairly robust that can do a good job you can go and rent um you can go book time in pirate studios and use the up-to-date latest equipment that they use in clubs to learn how to mix yourself so the barrier of entry is super low that means a lot more people are getting involved in it so there's there's i think there's too many djs out there and not enough opportunities so if that's the case in general if it's a male dominated industry women are going to find it difficult regardless but there is obviously a need i feel like to be a bit more representative of the crowd like i said about body movements festival the reason why that thing is that festival is amazing is because it represents the crowd that goes there right they cater to the queer crowd right so a lot of people playing are promoters and people that are from that scene catering to people that want to listen to that sort of stuff and obviously over time that's going to build up and going to get to where they need to get to but this idea that men should see those lineups and take it upon themselves to change it is a bit naive right to think that because everyone's trying to look after themselves for the most part everyone's trying to you know make sure their families are looked after especially after this pandemic too gigs from even on my side have been super super on the thin side so to think that now you're stepping out of your house and this is the time that they should be taking up arms for your other djs in tow who are also suffering when you've just about been able to kind of keep the lights on is a little bit short-sighted to think that but i think overall there does need to be a conversation around let's at least have the lineups reflective be at least a reflection of the crowds that we are kind of catering to or we're performing to that's it that's what i always say with these tech house events you know the crowds aren't even like you, know, you look at some of these 
parties that they feature on like a Fra 909 again I repeat a legend that YouTube page right I know a lot, lot of them I know you know mostly dudes in Italy and shit but still younger looking dudes fresh faced looking dudes why aren't those guys playing at these events why is it just the same people playing to them every single fucking year of course they want it because they're flipping buying the tickets and selling out those festivals you know weeks in advance but there needs to be some sort of refreshment program at least have a path to that because i don't know how does somebody go from playing dawson superstores to playing in Bergheim? i don't know how does somebody go from that i have no idea most people don't have no idea it's just a really unconventional winding road there is no straight path to that success so to to essentially say that they should just be automatically put you in the lineup because you're a certain background it's just naive to think that it's just it's too complicated really there's just too many layers that are on it a lot of it has to do with the promoters the bookers the event people everyone's kind of to blame maybe even the customers in some respect because it seems like most of the general public you know don't really like taking chances when it comes to nights out which is understandable too in london because nights out are like what a hundred pounds if you maybe without drugs right if you include drugs it goes super super high per person to go out so the last thing you want to do is to go to a night out gamble on someone you don't know and then suddenly you're in a festival or party that is complete trash do you know what i mean um you want to maybe just go what you know you know go to another solomon night you know whatever right and just kind of you know hope that that's going to be halfway decent and halfway be like a six out of ten sort of night instead of kind of taking a chance on a new one but yeah that's my thoughts on that one don't know if you guys agree let me know the thoughts down below in your opinions and comments and shit i'd love to hear it in it i'd love to hear it uh da, 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 da. what else we have to talk about here let's move on i think that might be how, what, what time how, how much time have i used up already have i used an hour Oof, I haven't I've used one ten already, man. Maddening, isn't it? I've used already an hour and ten. Yeah, let me pause it from there for an hour and a ten and now come on the other side and do an hour other hour because my computer's being buffering as well, so maybe I need to restart it a little bit. Anyway, five one seven of Diego Sil Zinger Show. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys again on the other side. Peace out for now, my friends. Peace out for now.